Hey, this is Rick, and welcome back to my channel. SMARD58, that streams backwards, number 58. From time to time, I come across things in my life that I think that I can fix, and I try to share those tricks or that experience. This job isn't too hard, and I thought I would pass it on. If you're familiar with this right here, it's called a hose bib. Now, it has a valve assembly built into it, and then you screw your hose in on the bottom here, and they can be external or in your garage, but this is a frost-free one, meaning if water gets trapped in there and it freezes, it won't split and flood the inside of your home. That's based on the manufacturer. Now, I haven't had any of these freeze or split, I've been very fortunate in that. But this guy here has been temperamental over the years. You know, I've had some health issues if you follow my channel. I also have the other channel, my health channel that I also do. So I haven't done this project for a while, but it's been bugging me and it's time to do it. It has a packing nut on here. It's right on the back beyond the valve handle. And what you do is you tighten down that packing nut and that'll seal the valve up from leaking. It's been leaking over the years and now the packing nut is actually bottomed out to where there's no adjustment in it anymore. The more you adjust this packing nut, it starts to freeze up that handle and it's harder to turn now. So now it's time to change this hose bit out. It's not a real long job and even with some um, minimum mechanical abilities, you should be able to handle this job on your own. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and change it out. I'm going to show you what you're going to need, supplies, and how to do this job. And hopefully I can edit this down so that I'm not too long-winded. You got to go to the source where the valve is. You're going to shut the valve off and then we're going to cut it and we're going to pull it out. I'll show you where you can order the replacement hose bib. We'll go ahead and we'll put that in. This one's going to be a simple job, just CPVC. If you've got a hard pipe like a steel pipe or something or copper, it's a little bit different. It's going to take a little bit more time. But for my application, it's CPVC. PVC, it's just glue fittings and you're done. Okay, so I hope you can see that okay in the camera. Here is a ball valve. Um, don't give me grief. The plumbers that uh, did the plumbing in this house saw this. Usually don't put a valve upside down like that, but it's worked over the years. It's only a half inch CPVC ball valve, so it's okay. I'm not going to lose any sleep ever, but they had a mistake here and I had them come back. They've got a bunch of couplings in here. So we're going to go ahead and uh, change that out a little bit so it looks a little bit better. So the first thing you want to do is you want to isolate your, your valve that feeds your hose bib. You want to go ahead and shut that off. You're going to bleed it off out there on the valve assembly. Hopefully you can. It's leaking. Obviously it's going to drain off by itself. And then we'll go ahead and we'll cut it, which I've done right here. It's going to use a sawzall or a hacksaw, or they even make these PVC cutters. You're going to go ahead and take the screws out in the garage area, and we'll go out there and we'll do that now that it's disconnected. Okay, so now you can see I've got the screws almost all the way out of here. They're just regular Phillips screws that you'll take out with a uh, cordless screwdriver, or if you got the patience, do it with just a hand screwdriver. You're going to take those out and now that we're cut on the other side it should just come right through there and there you go that's the old one and it's a Fusan which I would imagine is a Chinese manufacturer it says anti-siphon and we're going to replace it with a made in America valve made by Woodward so here's the new valve assembly it says freezeless wall faucet model 17 made by Woodward it's a little bit different design. It's got like a flange design here, but it's going to basically go in the same way, just a couple screws into the wall. And then here's your valve assembly. And I like the design on this because it comes out and it's a little bit easier to get your hose on there to screw on the end of here versus this design here that's on an angle. It always made it hard. I have big hands and I would always hit the valve handle trying to put my hose on. And this is a little bit further away. It has a MPT thread on there, which is a national pipe thread, which is half inch. And we're going to put an adapter on there. It's going to be a female threaded adapter to a socket coupling for CPVC on the other end. You can get those supplies at your just local store, whatever's near you. This can be mail ordered. I had this shipped to the house. This is actually a 10 inch barrel model. That means it's 10 inches long. Where the other one was eight inches, but I got a good deal on this one and I figured I could make it work. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a random piece in there, a little bit longer, and then I can cut it off down in the basement. I'll go ahead and I'll screw it on there and then slide it through the wall. Okay, so here's my random piece of half inch pipe. Here's the adapter that I got from the store. There's the female threads there, metal on this side, and CPVC socket coupling on the other side here. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna prep our pipe. All you gotta do is scratch it up with some sandpaper. We'll go ahead and prime it with some primer and we'll put some glue on there and we'll slide our adapter in. 
And this is like, I think the adapter was maybe three or four bucks. And the hose bib, I believe was $30. And like a six foot piece of CPVC might cost you around $3. All right, so your additional supplies, you're going to want the purple can of primer or just regular primer. I have some older primer around here, so I'm going to go ahead and use it, the purple. And then you have some medium clear PVC cement. They're both by the same company. doesn't really matter. We're going to go ahead and we're going to prime our pipe with the purple. And then we're going to go ahead and put on the glue. So you can see right there that the writing's gone. I've lightly scuffed it with some sandpaper, sand cloth. And I did the same thing on the other side of the adapter. So they're ready for primer. You want to lightly scuff those surfaces up and then it uh, gives the glue something better to bond to. So we want to take our primer. Tilt your pipe down a little bit so it doesn't run all over the place. These adapters aren't real big, so it's going to go in maybe about a half inch. And there we go. Set that over there. Do the same thing with your adapter. So they're ready to apply glue. We're going to take our dauber of glue out here. Go ahead and go around the pipe. Doesn't take a lot. I'm anal. Some people don't do this. So I'm going to put some inside here. Now you go ahead and take your adapter. And your pipe, make sure it's all the way in there. And then twist it about a quarter turn. Hold it for about 20 seconds. If you want, you can wipe that excess glue off. It shouldn't squeeze off. And it makes a nice looking fitting right there. See that there? Now we're good to go. Roughly about maybe half an hour. This is pliable to go ahead and work with it a little bit. Two hours is the setup time total for the job before you can probably go ahead and energize your water. Okay, now you're going to go back to your hose bib to the male end here. You're going to want to get yourself a roll of Teflon tape. This is going to be the sealing compound that will actually seal the threads in there so that they don't leak up against the adapter. And what you want to do is you want to wrap this in a clockwise position here. You go the other way, it's going to back off when you go to put your fitting in because your fitting is going to go to the right. So you take your Teflon tape. You're going to wrap in this direction. Now I like to put a generous amount on there because you're going metal to metal here. And you want a nice seal. Probably roughly around five wraps. You don't want to cover those threads up till they disappear. You still want to see those. And there you go. You're ready for the next step. We're going to go ahead and take some wrenches and we're going to screw on the adapter. Okay, so now you're going to want to take your adapter and the male thread. And you want to screw those together just like this. Make sure you don't cross thread them. And you can put a backup pair of channel locks here. And a crescent wrench or a pipe wrench and we'll run that up a little bit further so it seats in there okay so these are the two wrenches i was talking about you have a crescent wrench and a pair of channel locks this one on this side is going to hold you back and the other one's going to tighten you up now you don't need to bury this thing usually home water pressure maximum might be 75 80 pounds so this doesn't have to be like buried into the fitting or anything good enough nice and snug you're good to go you just want to make sure that you can't loosen it by hand okay so now we're going to slide it through the wall you have to work it a little bit. Now, if your hole's not big enough, you may have to put this through and put the coupling on the other side, depending on whether you have a large enough uh, penetration. Mine's okay. I've already sized it. And now we're ready to put the screws in. You're gonna need some like heavy duty wood screws like this, and they're gonna go right in here. And we're gonna go ahead and run them in. And there we go, we'll get them started. Usually the flanges on these uh, hose bibs, right on them is about the same. So if you had some good screws in there on the other one, you should be able to use the same mounting holes. Keep in mind that this is plastic on the back side here. It's a pretty heavy composite plastic, but uh, I wouldn't crank on it too much. So now that they're started, I'm gonna go ahead and follow up with the drill. See how it's pulling it right into the wall. And there we go. Make sure you shut your valve. That way when you tie it in and you energize the water, all you gotta do is come out and, and check your valve. Double check it with your hand screwdriver. You can just apply a little bit more pressure if you want to. You don't wanna mash this. Just enough so it's snug and you'll feel it. Now it's nice and stiff. Now this is gonna rock a little bit because of the flange design, but it doesn't come loose or anything. It's just locked in there, won't hurt anything because this flange isn't part of the valve assembly. It floats a little bit. Now I may have a little bit of uh, wall repair. If I'm anal and I want to go ahead and fix it, just do some spackling and some baiting. 
but it's a rough finish in here anyway. Now we'll move on to the next part, down in the basement. Okay, so I didn't bore you all with uh, taking measurements and all that kind of stuff. I've already demoed the old pipe out. I went ahead and fabricated up a new piece here with my 90s on there, and we're ready to go. It's going to go fairly fast. Go ahead and put our glue on, our coupling, and our 90. And we'll go ahead and we'll put it on this end first. We'll roll it up, and we'll go ahead and slide it in on the other end. Work it in there. Make sure it's fully seated. Looks like it is. Go ahead and take a rag around a little bit. Clean up the edges. Okay, it's been two and a half hours. Whatever, a little bit. So let's go ahead and uh, pressurize it. And I just heard it equalize. And there's no drips here. So we're good to hear. Let's go out and check out in the garage and see how we made out. Okay, so I've already gone ahead and pulled my hose on for my hose reel. And let's go ahead and turn the valve on here. You hear the water coming in here. And it's equalized in the hose reel. No drips, nothing around there. So we're good. That's a project well done there. <laughs> Hey, once again, thanks a lot for watching. If you like this video or any of my other videos, please click that button down there in the corner. That'll subscribe you to my channel. You never know what kind of video I'm going to come up with next. I have all kinds of hobbies and DIY projects. And if I showcase any products in my videos, I usually put them at the description page under the video on YouTube. And let me know if any of those links are broken from time to time. For whatever reason, they don't work anymore. And I've got so many videos out there, it would take me forever to try to figure out what links are working on what arm so if they're broken let me know and i'll fix them up for you share with your friends give me a thumbs up give me some feedback let me know how you make out with your project thanks a lot and take care